Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, and I'm back again with another Plan With Me video. Today I am setting up my bullet journal for February 2019. And this month's Plan With Me is another collaboration with a creator on the internet. This month I am collaborating with Mahat from Coffee Milk on Instagram and YouTube. He reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in collaborating on a video. And seeing as I've been following him for quite a while, I thought that was a great idea. So we decided to both create a love-themed setup. So once you finish watching my video, go on over and check out his setup video. I will link it in the cards, in the end card, and also in the description box. So we decided on love as a theme, and there are definitely colors and motifs that come to mind when you think about love, or at least they come to me. And as much as I love the idea of the traditional symbols that come along with February and love and Valentine's Day, I wanted to try to reach into my brain and pull out something a little different, slightly less expected. So as I was thinking about love as a theme, I started to think about what I associate with love. And something that came to mind is the Greek goddess Aphrodite. Aphrodite is the goddess of love, beauty, pleasure, and procreation. And the more I thought about it, the more I liked the idea of a theme sort of based on Aphrodite. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to try to create the feeling of where Aphrodite would live if she were up in the clouds, up in Olympus, what would her surroundings be like as the goddess of love? And that led me to want to create some paintings of fluffy pastel clouds where I would imagine that Aphrodite would take a nap. So that's kind of the thought process that brought me to this month's theme, which is love and is represented by a bunch of fluffy pastel clouds. So I hope you all enjoy this setup this month. I chose to create the clouds using watercolors, but you could definitely create something very similar using something like a Tombow brush pen. If you're interested, I can create a tutorial on my Instagram for how I would create the clouds if I were to create them using Tombows. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. But first of all, I'm starting with the cover page and I wanted to create a painting of all of these clouds, fluffy clouds with the sunlight, sun rays kind of bursting through and just try to create that very warm, fluffy sunrise or sunset feel. So I'm using my little travel Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set, which I will have linked below along with all of my materials. And just using the various colors from within the palette, purples, pinks, peachy oranges, um, even some soft blues, and just creating these clouds um, with quite a bit of water to start and blending the colors together, trying to make them look sort of fluffy and irregular. I'm generally following the shapes that I sketched out in pencil ahead of time, but also just kind of letting it go where it may, just using a medium-sized round brush. As I go in with the gouache, I'm starting with quite a bit of water and building it up over time. And once I'm happy with the base, I'm going in with pretty much just pure gouache out of the tube with almost no water on my brush to get more of a textured, opaque feel. I'm applying the gouache to the outlines of the clouds and then filling in the little space I left open where the sunlight should come through. I mixed white watercolor with a tiny, tiny bit of yellow to give just a very, very light cream color. And then used a small brush to drag out the color in lines radiating out so it looks like the rays of the sun. Now I'm going to let that fully dry and move on to the second painting of the setup. This one is going to definitely have a similar feel, but instead of having an opening in the top right hand corner, I'm going to have the clouds sort of 
getting further away and more misty, harder to see. As they come into the center of the painting, this is going to be my quote page, so I want the quote to be in that center area there. So I'm going to keep the center very light and faded, as if you're seeing it through the mist, through fluffy clouds, and keep the foreground around the outside of the painting darker, as if that's closer to you and obviously easier to see. So I'm sticking with the same colors here, pinks, purples, blues, and peaches, and applying them using the same techniques as the first painting. Once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm going to put that to the side and allow it to fully dry as well. So while those paintings dry, I'm going to move on to the other spreads in my journal, starting with my monthly spread. So first I'm just going to draw in all of the boxes for the days. As always, I do six by six boxes. It's just the size that I like to have for each day of the month. Now using a Tombow brush pen, I'm just going in and drawing the base of the header, the lettering for February. And then going in with a darker pink Crayola super tip marker, I'm just adding dots to the letters and I'm concentrating most of the dots at the bottom of the letters and then having them sort of fade up the letters. This is very similar to the lettering I did back in August. If you remember that setup video, that was my Instagram followers control, my bullet journal video. I'll link it if you haven't seen it. But I really liked that lettering with the dots really concentrated at the bottom and kind of fading up towards the top. So I decided to do that again this time. And I really like how the dark pink dots complement the lighter pink letters. Now I'm going in and using my watercolors again to create a bunch of clouds. As you will know if you saw my Dingbats notebook review, the Dingbats notebooks handle watercolor very well. I would definitely be cautious if you haven't tried your bullet journal with watercolors before. Not all papers hold up well to watercolors. So definitely do a test in the back before you just go in and start watercoloring because you never know what's going to happen. Even if the paper in your bullet journal holds up quite well, I would suggest putting an extra sheet of watercolor paper or paper towel behind your page just to try to prevent any extra water traveling through to the next page. I wanted to have a mix of styles of clouds so I created clouds similar to the last two paintings with the gouache along the top but I also created some more cartoony clouds where I outlined the clouds in a gold gel pen and then added highlights using a white gel pen. So you could do all of your clouds in one style or the other or you could mix styles like I did. I just thought it would be kind of fun to have both styles in the same spread. Now moving on to my sleep and mood trackers. Unfortunately, the clip showing the initial setup of these spreads got corrupted somehow, but luckily it's pretty straightforward so you can see what I've done. The headers are in the exact same style as the monthly page header, and my sleep tracker is the exact same setup I've used for a couple months now. Along the top is just the hours of the day and night. Along the side is just the days of the month. And then each day I just draw a line from the hour I went to sleep to the hour I woke up so that I can see the hours slept every night of the month. If you're not quite sure what I mean, you can check out my Instagram. I have some completed sleep trackers on there so you can see what it looks like. For my mood tracker this month, I decided to do something a little different. I usually do a graph, but this month I decided to draw a big cloud and each day I will fill in one row with whatever color corresponds to my mood. And at the end of the month, I will have a cloud made up of the colors of my moods. So the colors are ranging from blue for days when I'm feeling sad, all the way up to pink for days that I'm feeling happy with some gray and some peach in between. I'm then going in and adding some more clouds for decoration. 
and doing the same thing I did for the monthly spread where I'm adding a very light cloud along the bottom half of the lettering of the header just for some extra pizzazz. Now something you'll see as I go on to the weekly spread here in a moment, I realized that I should do the watercolor of the cloud before I add my dots with my Crayola Super Tip marker. This is because the Super Tips actually bled a little bit when I used watercolor after applying them on the sleep tracker header. You can see me trying to fix it afterwards, but it's definitely easier to start off with all water-based medium so using a Tombow brush pen which is water-based and using the watercolors and then once everything is dry going in with the Crayola super tip to add the dots it just means that they're not going to be bleeding and then I just created some more clouds for each day of the week and for my task list this is again my running task list which is my go-to weekly layout I'll link my video explaining how these work if you're not familiar with running task lists or rolling weeklies I like to fold the center page so that no matter what day of the week I'm on, I can always see my weekly task list. Now that I'm done the other spreads, I'm going back to my first two paintings. So what I did once they were dry is I scanned them into my computer and popped them into Photoshop just to make sure that all of the colors were accurate and to get rid of a couple cat hairs that somehow managed to be embedded in the paint. No idea how that could have happened. I then added the text in Photoshop as well. So for the cover page, I decided to just add the word February with a little bit of a drop shadow using some more of the colors from the painting. So I just popped that on top and printed it out and then glued it into my bullet journal. I then did something very similar with the quote page. This month I decided to use Veni Vidi Amavi, which is Latin for I came, I saw, I loved. You've seen me do this before where I create a watercolor painting and then scan it and glue it in instead of using the original. This is so that if I make any kind of mistake adding the lettering or if I knock on wood, lose my bullet journal, where's wood for me to knock on? Or spill coffee on my bullet journal, knock on wood, that won't happen. It's just kind of a precaution so that the original painting that you spent a lot of time on can be kept separately, it can be put on display, you can frame it, you can give it to someone, and you can just use a high res scan in your bullet journal. It's also nice because watercolor paper tends to be quite stiff, and if you were to put that into your bullet journal, it would definitely make the page very thick. I hope you enjoyed these fluffy pastel clouds, Aphrodite's home for this love theme. I'm really happy with how these turned out and I love how happy and calm it makes me to look at these spreads. If you like the paintings I created in this video, they will be available to my patrons as printables this month. So check out the link in my description box if you want to join the Plant-Based Bride patron squad. I'm currently using them as wallpaper for my lock screen and homepage on my phone, but you can of course print them out and use them in your bullet journal, use them for whatever you like. I want to take a second to thank my patrons for supporting me and a special welcome to our newest patron, Colleen. This month's giveaway will be happening next week in my husband's plan with me video. So stay tuned for that. I hope you all enjoyed this month's plan with me. If you decide to recreate any of these spreads or if you use my paintings as a patron, please tag me on Instagram so I can see what you do. I love to see all of your creations. Here on the screen are some of my very favorites from the last month. And of course, don't forget to go check out Coffee Milk's video next. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye friends.